Hello and welcome back to Car Culture and this is the BYD Seal. And yes, I've never heard of it either, but basically what it is, is another Chinese SUV. I know what I'm like about SUVs, I'm not particularly the biggest fan, but hopefully this can change my mind. Um, in terms of looks, it does look very different. It's got that sort of happy face at the front, it's very seal-like, um, and the colour is also very ocean-like, so it is living up to its name. And we'll have a look at the interior and see what that has to offer. So here we are in the interior, um, and first impressions, it's actually very comfortable. These seats are very plush, um, and also you've got this massive gaping hole here for USB connection and just some storage in general. Um, the design language in here isn't, you know, there's not much going on, to be honest. There's a few curves and things. It's quite good quality as well. Um, but there are lots of standard features here as well. Um, we'll start down here. Uh, one, one big complaint on electric cars or most modern cars is that there isn't any physical buttons for air conditioning and heating. But actually what they've done here is added shortcuts so you can press it and it comes on or off straight away and you can change the temperature as well. Um, you've got different driving modes here. You've got a EV and HEV mode as well. And you can change what assumes is a volume as well, yes. But we'll move on to this main uh, screen here, which is basically the size of a laptop. Um, and you've got the usual stuff like navigation, Spotify, Apple CarPlay, uh, radio, Android Auto, and all the other bits and bobs that it comes with the car. Um, but one cool thing I like about this screen is you can rotate it. Look at that. So now you can watch our vertical content if you want to. I'll move on to the steering wheel here, it's obviously got more buttons, you've got your um, different sort of shortcuts again, uh, you've also got uh, cruise control and you can actually control the screen as well on the steering wheel and on the sort of centre dash here you've got your usual uh, digital dashboard that shows everything you could ever need. So moving into the back um, we've got lots of legroom as you can see, look at that, brilliant, and the headroom is very good as well. Um, I like these little lights here actually, that you touch um, either side, that come on, a bit, bit more light here. And of course you've got the sunroof as well, which is giving me lots of sunlight and a tan. Um, but you've got other things like USB connection and, you know, the usual sort of cup holders and storage across the doors too. So, uh, boot space and practicality, uh, that's a big aspect for SUVs. Um, and this one isn't particularly good, actually, considering the size of the car. Uh, there's not really that much depth either. You can see, if I open this up, underneath, there is just nothing. Um, probably a battery there. So, that's not great. And considering the, the car's quite sort of sloped at the back, it's you know, not very high either. So, there we are. So this car is a HEV, which is basically a hybrid, um, and it has a 1.5 litre petrol engine as well, producing 215 horsepower. You do get nice instant torque from the electric motor, which comes in, and then the petrol comes in later. To drive, the BYD is uh, very economical. It's uh, very quiet in here as well, but it is quite bland to drive. It just feels like a car. Um, the steering isn't, particularly heavy um, I like a little bit of weight to it but you know it's it's perfectly fine for everyday driving now what's interesting about this car is it has a single speed transmission it has one gear for the electric motor and one gear for the petrol one as well it does also have regenerative braking and currently I'm going down a hill off any pedals and it's actually saving me some fuel and power as usual, this car has uh, different driving modes, snow field, that's what it's called, and that's for snow, grit and grass, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've also got sport, which I'm in currently, or why not, um, normal mode, and of course eco, which is just boring. Of course, I've already touched upon the sort of standard features here in the interior, but it's got a very good climate control system, apart from obviously it being on the screen. Uh, you have got heated and also cooling seats if you do want to change it up a bit. Overall, I really like the uh, amount of features here in the interior. It's almost like being in a very fancy living room that moves. But to drive, it is quite dull. Um, it doesn't really feel like something that you would drive for fun. It just feels like, you know, sort of getting to A to B kind of car. So then, the BYD Seal U isn't a car I'm particularly interested in. 
Apart from the fancy technology, it's very bland to drive, and most of the driving modes feel the same in practice. I think the design overall is on the nicer side when it comes to SUVs, but in my opinion, I think having an SUV is unnecessary to begin with. Thankfully, you can get a saloon version of this, which is just called the BYD Seal, and that looks a lot better. If you did enjoy this short review again, then make sure you subscribe to us, and we'll see you in the next one.